Welcome, everybody, to another water cooler with myself, Pumla Schmidt, also known as Exchange Goddess. And today, I have a packed room. I've got everyone here, all my, my closest friends with me, uh, uh, even my boss. Um, but today, we're going to do something a little different. We're actually streaming also on the IT Ops Talk uh, YouTube channel. So we're on all three channels and it is uh the topic today is about eventing during a pandemic or these new normal times or crazy times whatever we want to call it uh so we're just gonna throw out the topic and what do you guys think about events right now <laughs> is this, this is, do we have event fatigue conversations <laughs> do you like event virtual events are you liking it i mean are you, is it frustrating or are you ready to go back? To, I mean, I know I'm back. I'm ready to go back to in-person events. Like I can't wait until I can hug someone. I think everybody's ready to go back to live. However, this virtual world is making everybody get real creative so that we acknowledge all of the event fatigue that people are facing. And so how do we get creative? How do we get people engaged? And I think that's kind of where we wanted to dig into everyone's ideas, like what gets you engaged on a virtual event? What does that well, look like for each of you? Well, I, I got to jump in and say, I don't miss the in-person events with regards to conference cough or, yeah. the, you know, the food giggles that you get from the food that might go bad because trying to feed 20,000 people or whatever it happens to be can be kind of rough. So I honestly I was looking have been, at the hugs. I, I, you <laughs> know, the, 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 hugs, the hugs I love, hug ops is mm -hmm. awesome, but I do honestly... Uh, feel that I've been healthier this last year just because of not being around all those many people. But I absolutely, like everybody in the universe, is getting tired of seeing boxes of people <laughs> on the computer. Wait, wait, we're doing boxes of people right now, I guess. <laughs> but boxes of people is kind of rough sometimes. <laughs> well, I, a lot of it too is, uh, I think you you get excited about an event and you look at the agenda and then if it's a long ways out or something, you know, you, where you need to really be there on the, on the particular time, it can be tricky because then life intrudes and you, you, you can't be there where if it was an actual in-person event, you're going to get on an airplane, you've booked a hotel and you are present. You, it, it's protected time versus all the rest of your work. So that may be part of, of why, but yeah, hug ops is definitely it. And I keep thinking about the next time there's actually a convention. That's basically what you're going to see. It's a whole lot of big back slappy, good to see you. Oh my God, it's been over a decade hugs. Well, of the majors, what have we heard so far for 21? What's on and what's off? So by the majors, uh, reinvent, ignite, VM world, who's heard what? I haven't heard anything in person. The rumor on the street, and I, I say this is with no connection to the, the organization whatsoever, is that within a week or two, VMworld will be announced that it will be virtual for 21. And I don't know if that will set the tone for the, the rest or not, but that's the rumor on the street right now. Well, so that speaks to maybe it's just, it, it's is it now an opportunity that we know that they're going to be virtual as opposed to last year where there was this sort of consternation, if you will, right, of was it going to be in person or if it isn't and everything else that was going on in the world. Can we look at it now that, well, we know early and can we work on making those virtual events be a heck of a lot better than what they were last year? I think you're going to see, like you just mentioned, the notifications starting to come out bit by bit for some of the, the big ones that uh, are in the tech industries. Uh, and I don't think anyone's going to be jumping in immediately just to go in and say, no, we're all in, we're going. I think that events as a whole are going to be uh, acknowledging the fact that, you know, one of the one of the side benefits of having the ability to go virtual has been a massively expanded audience that you can now watch for people that can't that can't fly that can't get time off that can't have the expense of doing it like i mean just i'll give you the basic numbers without going too much behind the curtain but like the uh the 
the uh, event for Microsoft Ignite as an example, or Microsoft Build, take Build as a prime example for, for Microsoft for Developers Conference. You had normally about 6,000 people that could go. It was a small little event that was small in, in large scale terms, 6,000 or so in Seattle that would go. They had over 150, 180 million people at some point, not million, thousand, sorry. <laughs> I was thinking, wait, million? Wow! I didn't see that. I didn't see that email. The entire country. population. It, of the entire, you, you got it. You got it. It was so important to learn about the platform that it, that many people came up. No, anyway, th there was you know multiple factors of of 10x beyond what was possible to be able to be in person was available to be online, and people were like, oh, it's great! It's my first online event. It's my first ability to participate, but. Uh, so even when they even when companies do start to go back to some kind of a in-person experience they're absolutely going to realize they have to have a um a positive aspect of an online experience that goes with it and a hybrid hybrid type solution and and i have no inside details or insider trader secrets about microsoft as far as ignite or build or anything else like that and if i did i wouldn't be allowed to talk about it anyway <laughs> but but, but, uh, but, but we, 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 we are tipping our hats so far but we do we do have stuff we can talk about. Oh no, we, we do have stuff we can talk about. We can talk about that at any point during this. But, but from a from an in person experience, um, the hug ops, the seeing the people, the hallway conversations, those things that you cannot have not been replicated uh, at this point in time to great effect inside of an online experience is definitely the part that I miss the most for being able to do things. That's a really good point, Rick. And I think, you know, I, I can talk a little bit about Thwet Camp because we've been doing that for nine years now. And there has always been that internal debate between, you know, do you do more traditional online with you know, some maybe uh, with virtual booths and the rest of it, but then you sort of lose everyone off in those those channels where with Wet Camp, the good and sometimes rowdy thing about it is there's a lot of chat where there's thousands of people who can chat at any given time. And sometimes it's so fast in some of the feeds where it really is just people making jokes and the rest of it. But then you'll have a couple of other ones where you get that chance to run into people or to that you would standing in line waiting for a latte somewhere at a show or um, you can walk someone over to another expert. And that's the best is when you're talking to somebody and they have a question and you say, hey, you know who's standing right over there? is literally the person who wrote that code and and get that same sense um, that like uh, Ignite, um, you know, last year, but the year before, that really was the way that that felt, where there was the big expo hall, you had the experts. And then if you didn't have time to get to a, to a session, you could literally walk over and find the person who, was go who led that session earlier and ask your question. So that part, I think you're exactly right. Like that, that's one of the things that tends to be missing from a lot of events is that open <clears throat> human connectedness that makes you feel that sense of Congress of why you were there in the first place. I, I don't know if you guys saw what Andrew just posted, but I think this is the one positive of, <clears throat> yeah, the, the positive of things going virtual. So I know for myself being on a new team, we didn't have the budget to go to a bunch of the conferences and events that I was dying to go to. And I actually had to cancel from presenting at a few because we didn't have the budgetary funds to send. And so now not only am I seeing in the partner community things expounding because they can now do things virtually, um, people that couldn't attend before now can, and then they can pick and choose what sessions they want to listen to. And I also think like in this environment, oh, now I can grab your Twitter handle, grab your Twitter handle, connect. So to what you're saying, Patrick, yeah, I can't go walk over to the expo booth and say, here's Rick himself, or here's Exchange Goddess, but I can now tag them on Twitter and at least have some form of virtual networking connection that you might not always get in the live hustle and bustle of it. Now everyone, if they want to make the time, they can attend. So that is the positive. We just now have to get the attention. Um, so some of us work for vendors, <laughs> but I kind of like to hear what, you know, our customers, not, not non-vendor people <laughs> in the community, what, what are your thoughts? Cause I know you've attended at least one or two virtual events, um, and you might've gone to in-person events. What's different for you now? Are you liking it? You know, what do you want to see more of? Um, and, and like Andrew's comment, you know, about being able to attend ignite and build online where before he couldn't because um you know of cost it is is this something that you know you want to see more of because now you get a chance to to attend these large conferences 
I'll leave it between you know Richard, Matt, Jonathan, and Amanda. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about it, honestly. I mean, I like the convenience of the virtual events. However, um, I do miss the in-person contact, being able to network and meet per people in, in person. Um, that's really the biggest benefit. And also, given that I work remotely, I spend a lot of time on Zoom in meetings, so I don't want to be on another you know, virtual event, you know, so I want to have time away from the computer. So well, for me, I do miss the personal aspect of the in-person event. So even though virtual is more convenient. Yeah, I feel similarly. For me, uh, going to events, the hallway track, it's really the reason why I go. And the virtual events, more often than not, work just pulls me away. That's it, it, just not the same as blocking out my calendar. It doesn't, at least for my organization, it doesn't happen the same way as if I'm physically at the event, I tend to be left alone a little bit more. Do you feel disengaged? Like, like, hey, I'm just kind of here. I'm watching yeah. videos. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Some of the, the best things for me about being in a conference before was taking the tidbits from a presenter, but then having other people in similar roles that I am sitting around me and having those conversations afterwards, like, oh, what did you think about feature X that was introduced or Y? What problems are you running into that that will solve? So I think that's the part that I've missed the most. And as other people have mentioned, I, I haven't seen it replicated online yet. We've tried Discord and, and other online chat tools and it just doesn't feel the same. It seems like that's everyone's challenge. Uh, and to be honest, I don't, I don't even know how to begin to, to make it the same, right? Like you can't replace that physical connection. You may not be touching each other, but you're sitting, you know, a foot away or two feet away from someone. Um, and just being able to say, hey, I had that same problem. Mm -hmm. It's not the same yeah. on a Discord server. I, I, to be honest, I haven't tried Discord yet, but it's it's something worth trying, right? Maybe if everybody had their video on and we get the, you know all the squares, but I just feel like how can we how can we at least attempt to try to get that same feeling? Like you are sitting a foot from me, and we're all crammed into this room. It's really hot, and that guy didn't put the other end on, you know? Because <laughs> I, I hate to admit this, but I kind of miss that. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say to to both both your point and Jonathan's is that it's a lot of community starts with those shared moments, right? And if you go to a, like, if you're at a game, let's say you're a sports game, you're sitting in the stadium, you sh you're sharing the expense, the experience of the game and it allows you to connect with people that you didn't know. And so a lot of that connection for me is when I'm sitting in a session at a conference and then someone looks at me and, you know, says, do you believe that? Or I have that same problem or have you solved that? You just formed a new connection over something that is a part of, you know, who you are as a technologist. Like it goes to your foundation and it's comfortable and it's a really quick way of jumpstarting, creating new connections that uh, whether you just end up grabbing their Twitter handle and following them, or maybe you, you know, start interacting with them more um, or they'll throw a, they'll say, Hey, we're hiring. Let me tell you what we got. That human connection starts with that shared experience of the idea. And that is a lot of what's missed. Yeah, I mean, there, there's really kind of what, what I've seen, at least in the industry has been uh, like two, two camp or two mindsets. Do we try to recreate what's physical or do we try to do something different that is not physical, but also not what the traditional online has been for the last five years uh, to try to mix it up? Because um, you can't effectively replace a lot of these things that we're talking about right now. Uh, we can try and we can try different options for doing different things, but actually mixing up the whole concept for what an event happens to be and what it is. Um, so that's that's where I think people have to go and try to experiment and be able to try and see if they can bring certain pieces from here and there, but not try to replicate everything exactly as a physical. So, you know, I, like I mentioned at the beginning of this, at this, the water cooler was I'm interested to see what the big folks do. Uh, Microsoft included, you know, I, I work for Microsoft to find out how we handle those first, you know, trepidatious moments of trying to do an in-person event again and 
now successfully reintegrate the online back into it as opposed to having it bolted on like it was before just like how now it's an online event where we're trying to bolt on some some in-person type equivalent type technologies that are in there too um i mean i'm again i'm a little biased because we're trying something different that's coming up in february and and i don't know if if i should talk about it now or go just talk it. about some other thing yeah. but let's, let's but, go for it <laughs> well you know I did a blog post last week. This is a culmination of a number of months of discussion with people in the online community space, people on Twitter, people that are in different water coolers and stuff like that, that are around there that, that attend events and also put on events and, and execute on events. And a lot of all the stuff that we're bringing up right now is stuff that people come up with. The, I can't get time off work to attend. The, the time zone doesn't work for me because the world doesn't revolve around Pacific time from Microsoft perspective. Um, and you know how do we address all these different sort of things and how can we get to that point of of uh trying to address some of these things and so i i put the challenge to my team in one of our team meetings to kind of think of what can we do differently and how can we approach this differently and came up with an idea so we're trying something um the but the first thing we're putting forward is we're focusing on what the attendees tell us they want to have which first of all is I want to have good content, first of all, right? Uh, a lot of us have come back and, and done the analysis of the online events that have happened so far, and they say, well, your sessions can only be so long because you can only have so much attention span of people that are online, you're fighting for the screens, all that kind of stuff. So we have to find the right balance for length, uh, and how to be able to accommodate for it. And then we also have to try to adjust this time zone issue because we've got customers that are obviously in Europe and on Eastern seaboard time. And you also got customers that are in the uh, Australia, Asia, APAC region uh, that are on the West coast time. And how do you address these difficult things as far as timing is, is concerned too. Um, and then the, the uh, consumer, the, the, consu the, the consumption of this particular video, but then you also have to address issues of, I want to participate. I want to have those hallway conversations. I want to, I, I miss having the booth of chatting with Patrick or chatting with Holly or whoever it happens to be that's there that can help guide me to somebody else if they can't solve me that, that particular question where it is. Um, so we, we're trying something different. And the, the main thing we're trying different is that we are, first of all, um, not putting a limit on how long sessions are. Uh, and we're also, doing a small subset, again, just to try and collect the data to see if this actually works. We're not uh, putting a limit on the uh, time that the sessions can get played or replayed or, or consumed, if you will. So let's say we have two dozen different topics we wanna cover. The topic in broad general terms is gonna be hybrid and hybrid discussions uh, for making your on-premises world better with cloud or just making your on-premises world better. Uh, but um, what we're going to do is we're actually doing some pre-records of those content. That's nothing new. That's been done in the online world for, old, for a while. But we're not going to try to pass it off as being live. Like, it, this is known that I'm talking to somebody. It happened in the past. But it's a, a technical discussion, not just a monologue of a presentation to a camera. It's a technical discussion about topic X. And we've got, like, two dozen different topics that we're going to try to aim for for this. Um, and because it's going to be recorded, we're not trying to pass it off as being live. We're going to do a content release and say, hey, on this date, in this case, it's February 2nd, we're going to release this content. Uh, and you as an attendee, air quotes, uh, can watch that content anytime you want. It might be while you're having a coffee break, it might be in the morning before you get into work, it might be after work, it might be on the weekend can be any time. So you don't have to worry about the interruption or trying to carve off that time. And if you don't want to see all the sessions, choose two, choose three, choose the ones that, that are interest to you, uh, like you would in a regular conference, and then choose when you want to go off and watch them. So that's one of the main anchors for what we're trying to do for handling the length of time, because you, if you have shorter sessions, it's harder to get a lot of depth potentially. And also the frequency of when you want to watch it is completely in your control. You can binge watch it if you want to, like a Netflix. I don't know why someone would want to binge watch it, but you could. Um, I know my significant other would not be interested at all in binge watching this. Uh, but uh, Or you can choose selectively when you want to go off and, and do it. I'm, I'm curious from your thoughts from the folks that are online and, and hear about this so far, what do you think about the logistics of how this might play out and does it appeal or 
Rick, you're absolutely full of crap and that's horrible. I want to have live, please. Um, before, before people answer, uh, I do have a short link that you can go to if you want to basically read what Rick just said, aka.ms slash let's talk hybrid. Pretty easy to remember. So if you go to that link, um, it's his whole blog and I'll, I'll update it when we um, update our sessions as well. So every time you go to that, aka.ms slash let's talk hybrid, uh, you'll get an update on our event. So now... Everybody else can can answer answer the Rick now. Based on the events that we've had so far virtually, I mean that sounds like a format that would work better, at least for me as somebody who's working in the field, have DMs, Jira tickets, emails that pop up throughout the day. If I need to hit pause on something because there's a a severe issue, I can go, I can take care of it, I can come back and, and hit play again. And having that conversational format, I think, would be uh, much better than than just hearing hearing somebody talk at a screen. Mm -hmm. Would you join in on the Discord server to get to try to get that um, connected feel? I'd probably give it a try again. The why I've avoided them in the past is it feel doesn't feel authentic to me through chat it feels like you have you get one or two people in the room who take over the the chat and don't stop and, and just sort of are fast typing away their their talking points regardless of of what you might have asked or what might be said they they have their agenda that they're trying to push and it was sort of hard to come over that in a couple of other discord chats that i joined it sort of was like all right well if this person's just gonna type away a million characters a minute, I'm gonna, I'm out, see ya. It's almost like we, you know, you need kind of a moderator in there, yeah. To say, hey, yep, yeah. Let somebody else talk, okay. Well, from your perspective on the Discord server I, that, that um, Pumla brought up, the, the concept we're trying for that is slightly different. I, again, we think we're, we're not, we're not, abs we're absolutely not claiming uh, that we are coming up with all these ideas. This is simply iterations on other things that we've seen people go through. But the idea is that, so say topic 101 is going to be about uh, implementing a hybrid technology for offloading your files to Azure or something like that. And it's a it's a 45 minute session or a 75 minute session that's recorded with the engineering team and some customer feedback, or whatever it happens to be. You can watch that on your own time after it gets released but there is an associated channel that you could have an ongoing conversation with. But again, because it's disconnected from the event having to be locked in only during a certain hour or a certain time frame, it's open for 24 hours or the length of time that the particular window happens to be open for discussion. And you may have speakers come in, you may have partners come in, you may have other members in the community come into that particular channel when they're choosing to consume it and interact. So then, it kind of mitigates that noisy person that's in there all the time because you only have a set window because that person eventually is going to go to sleep, we hope. <laughs> and then other people can get their words in. Uh, but uh, so, th so the idea is that each of the sessions, when they get published, they will have a link to go off and to have your your hallway conversation. So if, if Richard down below there, here he is down there. If Richard is interested in this particular session that he and I are watching on different times, because I'm Pacific and he's East Coast, whatever it happens to be, we can indirectly chat about the topic and maybe even banter a bit back and forth in disconnected asynchronous time inside this chat channel. Um, and then disconnect for a couple of days and then come back to it and maybe back scroll if it was that interesting to me. Uh, as as a way of being able to have some of that hallway conversation. But then who knows, maybe uh, Fabian, who's the, the guy that uh, runs the service or whatever happens to be, maybe he pops in and says a couple of things and he's in Pacific time too. So it's we have no idea if it's gonna work, we'll see. I mean, in theory, we even have the ability to go through with the Discord server. And like uh, Pumala mentioned earlier, um, you mentioned that, I think, the the uh, the uh, ability to have a, uh, um, the camera's turned on for the discussion. So if Patrick happens to be extremely interested in going off and, and having a discussion about this particular monitoring solution that's there, he can, and he can even 
turn on his screen and even say, hey, I'm having a watch party next Tuesday if you want to chat. And I'm going to bring along a couple of my friends to have a chat in this particular room. Let's let's watch it together and press play. Like, uh, I think my, my son introduced me to that, the concept you can actually watch like a Netflix show in synchronization with somebody else in a different room or a different house uh, and watch the movie at the same time with the FaceTime call going on. So same type of deal. No idea people are going to do it, <laughs> but we're going to talk about the possibility in case someone wants to try it. But you know, Rick, you had, oh, sorry. I was gonna say, wouldn't it be cool if we did uh, like in the movie Ready Player One? Has anybody not watched that yet? <laughs> we all put our headsets on and, we're, and we go into the VR and it's like, oh, this is so cool. I mean, may, maybe we'll get to that point. I, the technology is there. We, it's we, there. Have, we have the technology, but I mean, who has a VR set? Uh, I, I don't, <laughs> but wouldn't that be, I mean, you don't count, Rick. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you, don't, you don't count. I bought it for the family at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 well, I was going to say, a follow-up question to that is, have any of you done like a, 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 a watch party for a virtual event with coworkers? Mm -mm. Uh, I've seen some people do that, and it makes it easier for them to carve out the time because they can say to management, hey, we're attending an event. And it's like, well, we need you to work. And then you can basically say, and here's how much we're saving you on airfare and hotel and conference fees that you normally would have paid for. Just we're going to go as a team and actually, you know, upskill in, 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 to the benefit of the organization. So I didn't know if any if you, if you had tried that before. I like that watch party well, idea, though. You bring up a good point. Are you guys finding that um, your employers aren't really taking it seriously that you're at an event? They feel like they can interrupt you more. No, mine oh, are. Yeah. What well, mine definitely are, because they know that it's community based and it's an effort that is in my commitments and it's my passion. So when I tell them I'm doing an event or a live stream or you know whatever it is, I block off my calendar and they're actually super respectful to the point that my manager said, "Put an oof on. Nobody needs to bother you. Nobody would bother you if you were at an event other than an oof." So treat it the same way. So I, I like that. C count your blessings. I'm the opposite. Yeah. I am. No, I feel, no, I feel blessed, blessed for sure. <laughs> yeah. Would it be helpful if you had the sort of same justification letter uh, that you have for a, an in-person conference for management so that you could basically, oh, yeah. like as a part of that event, it'd be click here to explain why <laughs> the, the value of this event to the organization? I think part of the problem, at least for my situation, is we are stretched very thin. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to take one person away. And not that it's not braggadocious, I'm the most senior on the team. So it's mm -hmm. very hard to pull me away or my manager away. And not to be disrespectful to the others on the team, but rely on them to do their jobs adequately, to put it nicely. Not that they can't, but there's certain areas that they're just not ready for. And that's the part to me where the, the recorded piece of that comes in and I think becomes valuable because you can, hey, there's a problem, let's step away, fix it, come back, pick up where we left off. And if there's a, a asynchronous chat somewhere going on, we can we can jump into that throughout the day, throughout the week when it's available. Amanda, you've been quiet, I'm gonna pick on you because we're, we're Tesla lovers. <laughs> there's somebody that rang the doorbell, sorry. <laughs> Bingo. But yeah. <laughs> so, so I got a question on the on the formatting. You said for Rick and, and Pumala, the format's gonna be recorded, but try to make it more conversational. Have you are you considering or have you considered bringing a small group of customers in or, or other people that can, you know, watch while you're filming it and, and have questions come up live during the chat that might be relevant to them obviously but are maybe also things that other people are thinking while you're giving that event so you can have a, a chat window where it's like oh hey you you touched on this but that doesn't make sense sort of thing so for the for the filming part we're because we're doing this in a fast rapid iteration right now we're kind of having like as an example pumala sitting in on behalf of the audience to to do those kind of questions that she would have or that the audience might have about that particular topic to be able to make it so it's not a monologue. 
we're relying on the chat interaction that happens in the Discord environment to be able to to capture other types of questions. But we are scheduling um, Q and A time with live interaction for each of the sessions that we've committed to producing. But it's going to be after everybody has done their homework and had the ability to watch the recording. Um, and so I'll be releasing more details about that in a, another blog post or two for how the semantics of that works and what the time frame is. But at this point, we are keeping it so that it's not like a, a watch party that's doing the recording to be able to take it uh, because uh, we just logistically couldn't figure out how we could make that all work in enough time that we we're trying to figure that out. That's a good point, though. So I got a question and it goes back to something that you said earlier, Rick, which was, you know, and you've said it a couple of times, uh, you're experimenting, you're trying something new. Um, do you all feel like this last year of virtual conferences has been an opportunity to experiment in a way that, you know, it, um, it's easy when you like for live events to get it to a certain level of production quality. And I think there, I've been to, you know, a couple of virtual events this year where they were trying to do the same thing and missed a lot of opportunity to try something new and some other ones where they didn't worry. They're just like, you're on a webcam go and you got to hear voices that you otherwise wouldn't have heard before. So like has the life of zoom lowered expectations or at least created more space to focus on content and not to experiment more and not worry so much about format? Or do you feel like, do we, y'all feel like you're expected to still, that a, an event has a certain framework that it has to satisfy? there's always the value of, of production, right? Patrick, that the, the pop of the screen, the graphics, the whatnot, the presentation, the, the, the cuts between um, speakers, the, the introduction, the hype that's branded into a program that you see at national level events. I don't know if that can be pulled back even for um, any type of virtual conference. To me, mm -hmm. being a visual type person, that mm -hmm. still always will stick out. A, a high level of production, I would think even for a non-technical person, if we would have a family member that was watching an event, they'd still be able to pick up on those nuances. But at the same time, I think for smaller scale things, that, that there's so many opportunities. And as we had talked about earlier, that level of, of inclusion, that, that, that element for those of us within the community, whether it be on the employer side or personal side that just weren't able to attend events like this, to, to now be able to participate, I think is a great thing. So there has to be some type of a balancing act there um, for innovation, yet, you know, not pulling back so much or being or, or holding such a high production standard where it would be that now we're charging for events or that you know we're, we're back to a model where it's virtual but it's near ticketing prices for what was in person I, I think that the the element of inclusion definitely needs to carry forward even when we go back to full in person in my opinion i mean you can you can look at the i mean to me the the epitome of big scale events is actually the one that's just wrapped up, which was uh, CES, right? Um, and they went virtual. We actually partnered with them as Microsoft with their capabilities before what we did to be able to, to try to pull that off. And I haven't seen the tech press or the CES press come back and say yay or nay for what it was. But what I did see as an attendee looking at it, they obviously went for the big production. They went for the big stage sound scenes and recording to be able to then play that in their particular session because they wanted to ensure that they could obviously if you give if you give a marketing team this is the event that launches our thing and what works with it they want to have control over what that looks like and they want to make sure there's absolutely no problems or no errors you're not going to get some some uh, tech geek come out and like say, oops, USB broke for us when he's doing a demo for Bill Gates from 20 years ago, right? You can't have that take place on a, on a, on a recorded stage. So they're obviously gonna wanna polish that. But then I feel that, like you mentioned, I, I feel that you do, it, it lacks a bit of the, the humanness of what goes on by having that level of polish for what's there. You watch the ESPN sports desks and the news commentators for the recorded segments that are produced, but then you also enjoy the human live interaction that happens 
in, in the biz, we call those the interstitials. You still have those that, that take place to be able to have that human aspect of, of bringing us back to those particular events too. Um, everybody's game is, is coming up. Like I can look at everybody here and we all have headsets and microphones. Uh, some of us have lighting that actually you can control and have fun with colors on going on behind you to do different things. Uh, you've got depth of field and better looking cameras to go off and do different things too. So even us doing these Zoom calls and doing these um, stream yard connections and, and streamcasts and, and Twitch streams and, and Teams calls, we're all trying to do something to be able to try to, to uh, improve the quality and up the bars a little bit. Uh, and, you know, I actually enjoyed watching some of the sessions um, where it was just a person in their house with their background behind them going off and delivering a session and you know a, someone comes in or you know the door opens and closes really quickly or something like that because it just reminds us that we're all human and we're all trying to survive this thing together right and rick along those lines and this is a question for the panel as a whole of the events that you intended last year who do you think did it really well and this could Ooh. be at any scale who who stood out who was the you know, best of breed or, or one to, to emanate what's who, who holds the bar now in your mind uh, going forward and, and will be the pace setter for virtual events. Uh, that's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm obviously biased because I work at Microsoft and yeah, I I'm not put on anything. events. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so obviously I'm biased. I know, I know what goes in to make the sausage and how it comes about. Um, I don't, per, you know, I'll, I'll be, I'll be honest. We're doing an event because I don't think we've learned enough and there's more to learn and we've iterated on each one. Like I literally remember being asked to help out with, we have an internal conference that we make available to our, uh, good friends in the community called MVPs, uh, most valuable professionals. And, um, that was literally like scotch tape, duct tape and glue and, and don't look behind the curtain kind of thing to pull it together. And we had a very critical, but also very appreciative group of attendees that was that were watching that one there. But then you fast forward to another event that was much more public facing, also free to attend, but much, much larger scale like Build. And it was it was similar in acceptance, but still a lot of kinks need to be worked out and identified a lot of areas to to iterate on. So um, I, you know, I can tell you from the next Microsoft Ignite, which is coming out in March, which we March. announced. Second March 2nd, second, yeah, second through fourth. Uh, that one there is going to have some other iterations and learning done from it. Uh, so at least I'm glad that our events team that I partner with to be able to do these kind of things is learning from it. Um, you know, it's <laughs> it's it's hard to say because you know I'm I'm also very much a fan of our partners and friends like over in, in Solar Winds World with Thwack Camp. That's a huge community driven community edgy kind of thing. They have pre-records, they have live portions of it. They have this massive scrolling wall of text that's going past like six bazillion miles a minute for people interacting on stuff to each their own for where they sit. Uh, so th those are my thoughts. I'm not gonna pick one as a, as a good one or a bad one, but I, I'm anxious to see what other people have said from what they've seen. But I also think that there isn't just one that's so significant in the sense that I think there's so many based on the content or the delivery or the discussion or the entertainment or the like. There's just so many things now that I look at in a different perspective from running events for so many years where if it was a great pr presenter with solid content technically, they, they were the one, but now there's so many different things. People are getting real creative, whether it's bringing their dog in or it's doing a dance or it's bringing other people in virtually into a Zoom call and, and making a sudden discussion panel. Or I mean, there's just so many things and people are really thinking outside of the box right now. And I think that's really unique that we didn't have before. Do we miss the drawings at the booth? I'm just gonna throw it out there. I was just thinking here, yeah, the Star Wars Lego that I stood in line for a VM world and I'm like, I've got my ticket. I mean, like, is that like, ah, uh, no big deal, but some people may miss that, which you kind of don't, don't get. Do we miss swag? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. who doesn't? I, I, my swag is my dog's toys, I hate to say it. <laughs> my kids miss they the swag. 
<laughs> my kids would always get excited when I would come back with a Microsoft t-shirt and they are, they, they do, they miss the swag a lot because that was the easy mom's going to leave when I'm bringing you home a gift. Here's a Microsoft t-shirt. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. The t-shirts are my workout clothes. So every time I'm running outside, my neighbors are like, what the hell is VMware? What, what is that? <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, she must work for Microsoft. So I, yeah, m all my workout shirts are, are the swag t-shirts because they go down to my knees. I had to buy new t-shirts this year, like from a store. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they wear out. They're not, you know, automatically replaced. Who knew? <laughs> I, can, I, I have a few that I haven't worn yet. I'll, I'll send you some. I still have the bacon one. Oh, from nice. From VMworld a few years ago. As far as events, good, bad, however you want to describe it, I'll be honest, my interaction was very limited. I would dip my toes for like two minutes. And again, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, I'd have to be pulled out or I couldn't give them my full attention like I'd hoped when I registered because of what's going on at work. So I'm not going to be critical when I didn't give them a full shake. So I have to be fair and honest. Yeah. I mean, that I we had, we saw the approach of, of going for an extended period of time, like uh, reinvent going across two, three weeks and then forgetting that it was still on kind of thing. Um, and then we, I'm curious to find out from a, I didn't attend a VM world equivalent this year, but they obviously were going virtual this had, had gone virtual this year. And I know that there was some interesting attempts at doing some, some cool stuff with um, some discord community pieces that were in there as well for some people that was adopted by and, and promoted by the larger community as well as also by VMware themselves as, as one way to stay connected on things. So um, how did that pull off or was that anything like what I, what I look at is what can I take from each of these individual little events and then bring them together to try them out or something like that? The, the VM world situation was interesting because the discord component of that was totally community driven to my understanding, right? That, that yes, was one thing that was that stood up on their own. Yeah. It, it was so, not actually a, a VM where like, stood up thing. So yeah, you're correct. To that extent, I mean, can we acknowledge that maybe there's there's room for that, right? That we can think about all of these different ways as, as platforms and promoters and working for large corporate marketing platforms. And sometimes, even though to the best of our efforts and best of our abilities, what the community comes up with is the better solution. Right, and to be open and not to to try to play, play that down, and that's one of the things I'll have to say from corporate marketing at VMware and and all of their efforts to promote that event. Said, you know what, we're going to go with this, and we're going to promote it, and and let the community use that as a platform to interact. Okay? I think one important factor. Sorry to interrupt you, Walter. Fresh on my mind, there's no sales pitch to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, no. No disrespect to any organizations. I know it has to be there has to be an aspect of sales because that's how it's driven, that's how you operate, so on and so forth. But the Discord channel and get my brief interaction with it, no sales pitch, community driven, like you said, Matt. And uh I thought it was I thought they did a great job from what I saw. But I think to loop back to the event that Rick and his team were about to present. I think it is completely community driven and I think we would be lost without the community impact and wh what their feedback is. And I am doing events for so long and we say we care about your feedback. Rick and his team are saying, OK, so between the virtual Ignite, the virtual Inspire, the virtual MVP Summit, here's all the little pieces that we're hearing that maybe could have been done better. And so now they're taking that opportunity to do exactly what you're saying is taking the community feel, concept, thoughts, feedback, and let's try something different based on what the community endeavor is. And that's why I think this is a really special event that we're that we're about to see. Well, that's why we're doing it, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find a way I can get this like dollar bill to hand down to you, Holly. Thank you for that data advertisement. We care about the feedback. We care about the community because we are part of the community. And, you know, we, we hear you. Like it, you know, but it's this kind of stuff that shows them that we hear you. A lot of times yeah. when you're in events, it's a great conversation. Like I'm like, yeah. I'm, I could see Rick like just soaking everything in. Like it's, it's right. really good feedback. 
Put right, but when you're on. in an event and you hear people say, thanks for the feedback, usually there's somebody in the room not taking notes on the feedback. And so now it's events like this yeah. where the community is going to say, oh my goodness, you did listen to the feedback. You heard I want to go four, five, six hundred level. You heard I wanted opportunity to listen again. Oh, and you heard that I want the hallway conversation and we're going to flip the switch and try and make it happen. So I, I think moments like this are when the community goes, oh, okay, so Microsoft is listening. That's, that's my take on it. I think the big thing was people don't want spam in their mailboxes, right? Like it, 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 how often do we get that when you register for it? I see Amanda kind of like said this. Yeah. It, it like, yeah, it, it sucks. I'm going to say it. I, I hate getting spam and we're not going to spam you. Nope. But in fairness to the vendors, I mean, again, nobody honestly expected to be in the position that we were in. If we had asked each other two years ago, we would be where we are right now. Nobody would have believed it. So, you know, it was it was hard to adjust to. I thought for the most part, from what I saw, they did a relatively good job, to, you know, considering the circumstances. And I'm sure moving forward, they're going to build upon those experiences and make improvements for to make it better for everybody. But um, it, it's a big task. I mean, my, my company is 260 employees. We had a virtual event. I'm not going to go into great details, you know, for obvious reasons. But I tell you, it was it was four hours and I couldn't wait for that three hour and 59 mark, minute mark to hit. It was just, it was, it was excruciating to be nice. So how, how do we, how do we make these events um, fun, but also keep your focus and your attention span? Because I'm going to admit it, my attention span is like, especially after COVID <laughs> forget, forget that. So how do we keep you, you know, focused and wanting to stay in these chats to continue to watch the videos and, and whatnot. Um, I think that's that's a challenge because I I think a lot of us in this industry have ADHD. I'm, I'm just going to say it. We do. No. Our attention span is short. Um, you're like, oh, absolutely yeah, right? <laughs> so how do we, what can we do to kind of keep you guys kind of like, you know, staying in the room with us a little bit longer, maybe for an extra minute or two, and then, you know, go see this girl and come back. <laughs> Thoughts? I think there has to be some level of, of acknowledgement on the participants too, right? So this is so easy to do on an event on a second screen or a third screen or a fourth screen that some of us have, right? Or we, we have put it on and we're trying to do our day jobs. And as Jonathan brought up before that, you know, the tickets come in and whatnot, there has to be a level of acknowledgement from the participant that if you are going to truly do that, participate, to block that time off on your calendar and for the employers to, to acknowledge that you're going to be attending an event just like you would be in person. Mm -hmm. it, that's not to say that there can't be other things done from, you know, the, the vendor side, of course, but I think if you're going to, to go and attend an event and if it's something that you really care about, I'm not saying you need to block off three days of your time during the week, but for those key sessions, that where you want to grab, or it's a 400 level where, where you do have that one-on-one -on -one interaction, take the time to block it off your calendar and know, have your teammates know that you won't be available because you're attending that event. But don't you also think, because I completely agree with what you just said, but don't you think that it's a shared relationship? So the people that are participating, they need to come ready to not just sit and wish somebody would ping them on Zoom. They need to come ready to engage as awkward as it might be sometimes. And the presenter, whether it's virtual, I mean, I know we're going to have like the, the side discussions in the hallway. They have to be ready to come and engage with the participants. So it, it's a shared relationship that I think if we do it together with, you know, we prep the presenters that are, you know, running the the side meetings and the people that are presenting come ready to have that discussion. I've, I've done the events where, oh, let's do the roadmap. And it's absolutely crickets because nobody wants to talk and it makes it hard for both parties. So when we come both ready to have that discussion, as we would, like Rick said, in the hallways of Ignite and Spire and things like that, I think that's when everybody's going to find the benefit, even if it's just five minutes longer. That's my two cents. Do we need a magi magician like with the presenter? Because you know when you go, <laughs> you know who I'm talking about the magician at the the, the conference expo. That's got there's always some booth that's got the magician going on. Yeah, some booth there. <laughs> virtual Star Wars costume. <laughs> maybe we have these interstitials where 
you know, I dress up a, as, you know, I don't, I don't know, a bear or dog or something and start making weird noises to get like, hey. I have um, a dinosaur onesie. I'm happy to wear it. <laughs> nice. There, there was a there was a particular thing that we tried at Ignite last time, which was interesting. That we it was a session that they called a table talk, and the idea was we we obviously were Microsoft. We use Teams as our back end to be able to do a lot of the content that you see on Microsoft Ignite to be able to enable it from a broadcast perspective. Um, but you know, there's Teams live events, which is controlled like this, where you've got only certain people that can talk and that's it. But then you have a regular Teams call, like a regular Zoom call, where anyone can turn their camera on and turn their microphone on and stuff like that. And there's limited capacity for those. In this case, at Teams, it's publicly known that our limited capacity is around 250, I think. Maybe it's 300 now, I, f I forget. Um, but that's for a Teams uh, call as opposed to a live event, which doesn't have a, a, an effective capacity to it. Uh, and what we did was we actually booked those teams meetings as a table talk. And then we had a particular topic. It was chaired by one or two different people from the community. It had some people also from the, the product teams and in parallel conversations that were there. But then the rest of the seats are open for anyone to join. And at the very beginning of those sessions, the presenters were basically taught or trained to say, you know, feel free, turn on your camera turn on your microphone. Um, you know, we reserve the right. We might need to mute you if it's too loud. You got feedback noise, whatever it is, but we're here to talk. We're going to talk for two minutes about this, whatever this topic happens to be. Uh, but then uh, it's open for anyone else to comment about something. And uh, I had a, the fortune of sitting in on a couple of them during my hosting duties that I was doing during the day. And uh, they were really cool to watch people I've never met before having to have their ability to go off and they have their voice heard and, and chat interactively. But it was only during this one half an hour slot and that's all it was. And then they would do another one on the same topic in a different time zone, but it's a different batch of people that were interacting. Sort of like our water coolers. It's, it's like this, but even on a bigger scale, you're not yeah. limited to just, you know, the full experience of nine people. You had literally anyone could turn their, their, their cameras on. So th th there was a topic on, uh, actually on learning tools for people for doing homeschooling, that sort of stuff, how you can use the assistive reader, the OneNote capabilities and stuff like that. It was a really interesting topic that someone had proposed. And it there was like 90 people in the call and they all were chatting back and forth, ideas, how they worked and did, did different things. It was awesome. My, so, my downside is I wish they were recorded, but for privacy reasons, they couldn't be recorded. So they were, you had to be there or you missed out one of those little yeah. nuggets. So would it feel more like, would you feel more connected if you were actually part of the event? And I'm, I'm speaking to like non-Microsoft, non SolarWinds people. Like if you were actually participating within a session or something like that, would you feel more connected? Yes. I mean, I don't know how we would achieve that, but it's, you know, it just off the top of my head, like, because I'm sitting at home and when I'm at an event, I feel disconnected as well. But I think if I was actually participating with them somehow, I would feel more connected. Like when we do, when I do the water coolers and the reason why I do them is to make people feel like they are connected and, and we are in the same room and we're standing by the water cooler trying to get our coffee or water or whatever, uh, that, that physical connection is, is important, right? So if you are participating in some way, kind of, it kind of replicates it a little bit. I, I don't know how we could accomplish that, but it, it's, it's an idea, right? Get, get attendees to sort of participate in some of the sessions. The, there, there was a cool experiment that, um, I like the, the I like uh, table talks though. I definitely like those. <laughs> the, there, there's a cool experiment that, um, the uh, M365 team tried um, inside of our organization where they had basically uh, the Microsoft Teams together mode uh, was one of the screenshots that they did for video capture. It was a recorded session, but they basically gave out the link to the particular Teams meeting they were using for the recording. And they said, hey, we're recording this for an event. Would you mind being like one of the people in the NBA stands watching the NBA games? or the NHL games uh, that are on right now. And then you'd basically just be sitting there like looking at the screen, <laughs> but then you had other people around you in, in like a stadium style seating. Uh, and then over to the side, you actually had the presenter screen and the presenter 
up there talking and doing something. Um, it was it was an attempt to try to bring some of the audience participation in. They could ask questions, but it's obviously recorded. But then they played it not necessarily as as if it was live, but they played it as, "Hey, here's another way of going off and, and seeing that." So when when Seth uh, on our side, uh, one of the cloud advocates, a good friend of mine, Seth Juarez, he tells really bad dad jokes. Yes, he and does. So whenever he does a bad dad joke in his presentation, the audience actually groaned, and <laughs> you'd get that level of interaction that was happening. And then you had commentary during during the session replay. It's like, wow, how do I get on the screen? Like, how can I participate in that kind of thing? And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. How can we work with that? <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet, but that was a pretty cool thing that they tried. Steve Greenberg made a great comment here. The bottom line for me is that while I expect high production values for big events, I think organic and authentic normal type Zoom interactions is the most beneficial. And I think I would agree with that. Organic and authentic, I, I think, uh, feels real. But if we can kind of merge those somehow, uh, you that's know, a big, that's a big challenge. It, it it is, it is. But like, I keep thinking, when are we gonna? When's this gonna be done? Like, I don't that's think, a whole, I think that's a whole another water cooler session. Yeah, that that's <laughs> definitely another water cooler session. Uh, it, it you know, I just keep thinking, how can we? How can we get people together? Because I'm all about bringing people together, and you know, how can I connect one another and and help people and you know, normally I'm out there doing that physically, uh, but now it's like virtually, it's like, okay, this is kind of tough. Here's a link, you know, here, turn yeah. your camera on. And I don't always turn my camera on, I'm gonna admit it. I, I don't because I look like shit half the time. Uh, <laughs> I did my hair today. This is the first time I've done it in a month, Rick. Okay, actually hey, two months. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing my stretchy jeans because my regular jeans, I don't know if they still fit or not. So I got my stretchy jeans on, but it's a step up from my pajama pants, which is my normal way. You're wearing jeans? I haven't worn jeans in months. Like yeah. All of us, all of us. Like, yeah. I'm like, I, you know, this is, and I have lipstick on. It's the, been a while. The, the, the saddest, the saddest thing is literally uh, like back a year ago, uh, I had bought some new work shirts that I was going to start to wear. I, they, they, <laughs> like literally I'm trying to up my game and, and we're like a button down as a casual kind of thing. I, I invested in some, some shirts. They're still on the same hangers. I put them on. <laughs> Do they have the tags still on them? <laughs> no, the tags aren't on them. At least, at least they are hanging up, but uh, they have not been ironed. So they still have the package creased inside of them. I'm hoping those creases came off. Uh, I have we'll more see. clothes and they still have tags on them. I haven't taken the tags off yet. Yeah. I, I bought a whole bunch of stuff and I'm like, I hope they fit. Oh, I just came, I just came downstairs the other day and I was in jeans and just like a regular like going out shirt like I would wear to work and both of my kids why are you so dressed up I said oh because you meant I'm out of my hoodie and yoga pants yeah they're called jeans friend That's, yeah <laughs> well friends we've got three minutes left and like this was a really really good conversation I like, I was expecting it to be really good but it, it's I think it's even better. Um, really good insight into what everyone's thinking. I used to be a customer and now I'm on the other side. So, you know, it's just, it's nice to hear from someone that doesn't work on, you know, I don't want to say on the dark side, <laughs> but <laughs> as Jonathan, yeah, sometimes it is the dark side, but it, it's nice to hear Ooh. what you guys are thinking. Um, so this, this has been great. Any last thoughts from anybody? Can I just throw one thing out yes. for, for those that are non solar winds, non Microsoft, if you have ideas on how we can simple ideas on how maybe we could think about in, engaging you in a participation with you in the upcoming events, reach out to, to Pumala. I think it would be a good idea. And would you guys be open if we had some ideas on our own that wouldn't take up a lot of time on your end on ways that you could get engaged? Would you be open to that discussion? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of work clothes, Anthony, my teammate says, can flannel be uh, considered work? And I said, yes, only if you're Canadian. Absolutely. <laughs> 
Absolutely. We, did you did you all see the there's an Xbox controller from Xbox Canada that's that's currently making the rounds on Twitter and it actually has a jeans uh, cover to the, oh. to the whole thing. So it has little tiny back pockets and it's got belt loops and it's like denim and they're calling it the Canadian tuxedo version. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you see the Canadian road rage video? So <laughs> the Canadian road rage video where the guy gets out and cleans off the snow off the, the back window for the car. I've, I've seen the video, honestly, of a person that was trying to steal a package off of the, off of someone's porch and he backed his car out. He got stuck on a snow drift and he's trying to push his car off of the snow drift while it's like, dude, you just like trying to run away. It doesn't work. It doesn't work again. Oh. Amanda has her dog out. Yep. Hi, puppers. So we are at the end of our uh, our water cooler. Thank you, everyone, for watching or will be watching. Uh, this was great. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments, tweet me at, at Exchange Goddess or any of our uh, panelists here. Thanks again and have a great Friday. Bye. <laughs>